Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. And we've come, of course, to the end of the Fringe, and business is back to usual. Now, of course, the Fringe is usually filled uh, with comedians and shows and things uh, and whatever. But for some reason, politicians seem to want to get in on the act. And every year, they race to Edinburgh to sort of put out their particular brand of mad politics, whatever it will be. Uh, and they're usually all rubbish anyway. But there was a highlight. I've got to say there was a highlight of this year's show. Uh, it was Hamza Youssef. Uh, and he was in discussion there. And, uh, of course, one of the uh, audience members got up and took Hamza Youssef at his word. Hamza Youssef has said, of course, that um, should, you, um, should you be faced with any kind of bigotry, you should turn and tell that person to... Uh, you, know, you can't say the words too early in the video, but to go forth and multiply... And of course, uh, that is exactly what happened. Someone in the audience, Niall Ferguson. Well done, Niall. We all stand behind you on this one, dear chap. You have been marvellous. Stood up in the audience, expressed exactly what he thought of Hamza Yousaf and was appalled by Hamza Yousaf's blatant anti-white racism and told Hamza Yousaf to go fuck himself. Uh, and then he walked out. And well done, Niall. As I say, you are, sir... Uh, a hero, not all heroes wear capes, but you certainly should. But of course, the uh, the fringe is over, and so it's time to end the comedy and go back to reality. Unfortunately, of course, Hamza Yousaf hasn't been told. He hasn't been informed that the fringe has finished, uh, and he's about to launch into something completely comedic today, uh, where he's going to stand uh, in in uh, in Edinburgh uh, and to, to to address the vast crowds of people who've come to hear him speak, and he's going to tell them all how near to uh, independence they truly are. Now, there's a lovely little piece here. Uh, it's, it's exactly that. We're going to go through this, uh, and it's basically showing Hamza up as being the complete buffoon he is, and uh, and showing what, uh, what a failure he is as well, uh, now that the fringe is over, and uh, he hasn't realised. Anyway, here goes. So has nobody told Hamza Yousaf the fringe is over and his stand-up comedy routine is too late? I was going to say his stand-up comedy routine won't be particularly funny. Uh, and it's, Actually, it's going to be funny, but not for the reasons you think. Um, it's going to be hilarious for us watching from the outside because he's expecting a huge crowd. And I think the crowd will be a lot less than, uh, than he thinks. There will be far fewer people than uh, he imagines. He's thinking that there were... Uh, um, you know, there's going to be a big uh, appetite for what he has to say. He can't even convince his own side to listen to him. Anyway, the search for laughs in Edinburgh every August sees 2.2 million people flock to the city's comedy clubs, where it's just 10,000 we on hand to hear the biggest joke in Scotland on Saturday afternoon. That's assuming 10,000 even turn up. At the time of recording this, I don't know how many are there, uh, because I recorded this in advance of his meeting, of his... Of his um, appearance so um we will look at it uh, afterwards and see if there are 10,000 i suspect possibly not anyway i thought the joke of the fringe this year was a particularly lame effort says the writer of this piece i started dating a zookeeper but it turned out he was a cheater uh, i don't think that's funny at all i think it's rather pathetic uh, lorna treen's gag doesn't even really make sense it would actually work better if she said she started dating a big cat uh, but that would just be too weird um, not if it was a cougar. Hey, dating a cougar. Anyway, Rod Little actually made this point in The Spectator, writing, The second thing to say is that Lorna's joke quite possibly was the funniest thing said throughout the ghastly festival, because the band, all the stuff that's really funny, yeah, you're not allowed to say things about anything now. There is no sense of humour anymore, because the left have decided that humour is right-wing and obnoxious, and you're not allowed to be funny. And so Christmas cracker jokes are the limit now of uh, of what's funny. And that's why you can win these things uh, with quite literally shit jokes. Uh, but the biggest joke of all, of course, is Hamza Yousaf. And him turning up um, to do uh, the Fringe was just a joke in itself. And as I mentioned, uh, you know, he got his own um, commitments on that one. But he's not. that's not stopped him from hosting uh, an event in Edinburgh. And he's doing it again today. But anyway, perhaps the panel of 10 comedy experts from the TV channel, Dave, who drew up the shortlist should have extended their search for laughs by a week or so because quite possibly the biggest practical joke of all time 
will continue in Edinburgh this week. Hamza Youssef will be the headline speaker at the Believe in Scotland rally outside the Scottish Parliament on Saturday afternoon, where he will tell around 10,000 independent supporters that a separate Scotland is closer than ever. Ho, 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 pull the other one, Hamza. It's got bells on. Now he's saying Believe in Scotland. Now I don't have a problem with Believe in Scotland. I've been there. I know it exists. It's not like, you know, um, the, the Easter Bunny or Father Christmas or something. Scotland really does exist. It's a real place. It's not Oz. You don't have to take a, a, um, a tornado to get there. Um, it's just, oh, look, there we are. You've gone up the M6. It turns into the M74 and way hey, past Carlisle. And there it is. Second star on the right. Keep going till breakfast. Uh, anyway, his fellow stand-up comedians include Scottish Green Party co-leader Lorna Slater. She's the biggest joke of them all. Uh, whose incompetent handling of every single policy under her remit would be utterly hilarious if it wasn't for the fact she's cost businesses hundreds of millions of pounds and caused untold stress and worry for ordinary people. It's a woman who, and I, I'm going to be honest and say, I didn't think anyone could fail worse than Hamza Youssef. But Lorna Slater, well done. Well done. You've managed it. You have failed worse than Hamza Youssef. That's quite an achievement in its own right, and I think it's worthy of a round of applause. Uh, the Hollywood actor Brian Cox was also due to speak, but he was forced to pull out uh, after lying about testing positive for COVID. And it's hard to imagine that his idea of a federal United Kingdom would be very popular among such a committed crowd of gnats. So perhaps he's had a lucky escape. Um, he never turns up to these things. He was meant to turn up with um, Salmond and decided not to. Uh, he didn't have COVID then. He just couldn't be bothered. Uh, because it involved going to Scotland, a country he got out of the first time he had enough money to buy a plane ticket to the United States. The biggest chuckle of all, however, must be reserved for Hamza Youssef's Minister for Independence, Jamie Hebben. He is literally laughing all the way to the bank, thanks to his £98,000 uh, salary entitlement, plus expenses, of course, uh, in order to come up with various fantastical schemes and weeds about what life would be like after Skexit. I will go from the words from Leviathan. It would be nasty, brutish and short. Kind of sums up uh, a lot of them, doesn't it? Uh, no matter what that, the Scottish Government was forced to pull the plug on its own plan for an independence referendum on October the 9th, 2023. Yep, that's next month, folks. Uh, yeah, they planned that and then, of course, it was gone and the Supreme Court told them to go forth because they don't have the entitlement to do it. Oh, damn, the stamping of tiny feet, you know, uh, as they tronced off home, uh, had a little hissy fit and said, well, what can we do? And realised that the answer to that question was quite simply nothing. Uh, this date was first revealed in June 2022 at the same time as the bonkers suggestion that if the UK, UK government uh, refused permission, then the next general election would become a de facto referendum, something of course it can't be. Sturgeon, whose own political career is still waiting for its punchline and co seriously suggested they could pull together all the information necessary for us to be vote to becoming an independent state in just over 12 months. And then she abandoned it, knowing that if she failed to win, it would be giving the opposition such a valuable weapon to use against them. Give her all her faults. She's not an idiot. Um, anyway, it's been nine years since the last referendum and the SNP still don't know what the state, how the state pension works. You couldn't make this stuff up. It is comedy gold. Armando Iannucci could write a Scottish political sitcom without having to make anything up. I have said this. I have said this before in videos. You wouldn't, you know, you couldn't make this up. You couldn't write a comedy like this. If you did, people would find it completely unbelievable. And yet the sad fact is people are having to live through it. It is absolutely awful. Uh, anyway, Believe in Scotland supporters are being asked to assemble in Johnson's Terrace in the shadow of Edinburgh Castle at 1.30pm. To be honest, they could, they could probably assemble in the cafe uh, next door to that terrace, uh, you know, because they'll probably get 30 people and a dog. A wee ginger dug, in fact, a wee ginger dug. Uh, from there, they will march down the Royal Mile. Well, stroll. Um, a couple of people might have to move out of the way. There won't be a march. Uh, and in a defiant display of satire's offensive slogans and cod socialist rhetoric. And if the power of wishful thinking could be somehow plugged into the national grid, 
the energy crisis will be solved at a stroke. Oh, bless, I do love this. Now, here's a picture uh, of Barcelona. Uh, and this is the pro-Catalan march. These are people in Spain who want an independent Catalan. And look at them. There's a lot of them in Barcelona going, we want a free Catalan. You see there's about six people on the, uh, on the terraces overlooking. Well, that's the SNP crowd um, today at, uh, look, you know, waiting for Hamza to turn up. Certainly won't get there. Do you remember after the bombing um, in uh, Madrid? God, it's got to be 20 odd years ago now. Uh, I happened to find myself in Madrid that weekend and uh, I, I was in a two million man march. It didn't mean to be. It was me, my wife, my son. We were trying to get across the city from one side to the other. We were on foot and we literally, we got a bit of string and just tied each other with the string around each other's wrists put Tom in the middle, his son in the middle, and we just dragged across that city because we didn't want to get separated. We got to the hotel, went upstairs, and we had the balcony, we were up there, and they were going past, and they were clanging and banging and everything like that. Uh, we couldn't get any sleep, but to be honest, we didn't care. We got a bit of room service up, got some beers in, we sat on there, and we were drinking beers and watching them and shouting and giving support uh, and all this, and it was an, a wonderful thing. There's not going to be that today, is there? Not going to be anything like that. Uh, and in fact, when you think about it, um, who are, uh, hearts are playing... Dundee, who the hearts playing today? I'm trying to think, Motherwell. Hearts are playing Motherwell today, aren't they? Um, and I think that'll be a bigger crowd uh, than will be there for the SNP, um, and certainly a more entertaining crowd. Well, for at least half of the side, uh, half the crowd, anyway. So there he is, the biggest joke in uh, in Edinburgh. What a sad loser. I shall round off and come up. Yeah, there'll be, you know, half a dozen people, like I say, and a dog, and that'll be him. And he'll be sitting there talking about, oh, independence is closer than ever. Even though the polls say otherwise. The polls are saying it's further than it has been for quite some time. And falling. And absolutely falling. He, of course, is the main reason. He's very unpopular. He's um, He's got no personal charm. And they keep showing that his uh, his popularity is downward trending. Surely even the SNP must look at what happens today. And if it's an appallingly bad crowd, just basically sort of start nudging each other and having quiet whispers about, it's time. It's time. Do you think he looks tired? Do you think it's time to go? It's time. Uh, and then wait till the conference. Let him have his conference. Let him have a, a moment in the sun. And then, you know, just ease him out the door. Thank you very much for all your work. Now, sod off. Or in the immortal words, uh, of Niall Livingston. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see in here on the channel, please do hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, leave a like, leave a comment, please share the video. And until next time, stay safe, stay well, and remember, it isn't long. Hamza will soon be gone. Thank heavens for that. Bye.